next song is a request by a very special lady. She knows who she is. And it's a very, very special song for her. So we're going to dedicate this to her. You'll all know this one, How Great Thou Art. 
Join us. Come us along.
Ace Matthews. member of the church that brings me to February the 2nd is our new members class. Uh, we want everybody that, <clears throat> I mean, there's a lot of people have been coming just since I've been here since August. So we want, we got about 15 already signed up for our new member class. So I'm working on the little packet. The good thing about when Pastor Chip makes a membership packet, it'll be simple. Amen. <laughs> it'll be good, but it'll be simple. So we would like you to come to the class if you're new to the church. Within the last six months to a year, whatever, if you've never been, uh, it'll be real simple. But we're excited about it because uh, we're going to provide food. Can I get a good amen for that? We're going. It's not going to be fancy. It's just going to be a little pizza. But we're going to uh, feed you right after church on the second February. Won't last a long time, but we are doing something that's kind of cool. It's we've spent a lot of time today in the office here trying to get this packet work together. We found a spiritual gift assessment. Uh, be good for everybody in the church to take. I promise you. It's a blessing to see the different gifts, how God gives each one of us. So we're going to get this membership class behind us. And But if you would like to take that test, it's just like 75 questions, but it's like one line question. You can take the whole thing and 
8 to 12 minutes. It's pretty quick, but it lets you know your God given some of your God given gifts and talents. Like one of them was, Do you like to go deep into detail? And I was like, Never. All right. But thank God for people that are deep into detail. They, believe me, I need people that are detailed because I'm not as detailed, but that's okay. God makes us different. Aren't you glad we're not all the same? God makes us different and uses us. So we are going to give that little spiritual gift test. Uh, and we would invite you to, uh, if you come into the membership class, feel free. But if you want to take one of those, I'll try to get one in your hands. And then we all need to find our place where God wants us to serve. we got a play day series coming up February the 1st. The 1st of February will also be a family day. Remember in September when we got out in the parking lot and had Bucky the Bull. We had all kinds of stuff going on. We'll probably have some wagon rides that day. So February the 1st, plan on that being a, a family day as well as our first play day. <clears throat> we did add mutton busting into the play day. So uh, we brought down uh, six sheep last week for a little youth rodeo. And, uh, we, we picked the sheep up and they gave us a, an envelope with cash in it. So our sheep made their first money. All right. <laughs> They, it was funny, they made $60. They gave us a stock contractor, so we are some big time sheep stock contractors in Texas. But we we did have fun. We picked the sheep up Sunday after church, and they were glad to see us and get in the tray. When we loaded them, they didn't want to load up, but we backed up to the pins after the rodeo. They got right in the trailer. They was ready to go to Lufkin, Texas. All right. But we did have, have fun with the sheep and kids. Kids loved it. Uh, this Sunday is leadership meeting, plus they'll also vote on uh, elders for the church. The welcome wagon, the church wagon, do need a little help, so feel free if the Lord puts it on your heart to help out. February the 9th will be Missionary Sunday. Miss Joe, it's Miss Sherry Bumstead, is that right? It's Missionary to Africa. She'll be here on February the 9th. Mr. Uh, <coughs> James. Uh, visited with her a few months back and set this up. So February the 9th will be Missionary Sunday. That'll that'll be a good day. Amen. They'll have a PowerPoint and a lot of things and what goes on. I think that's all of our announcements at this point. If you have your Bible, <clears throat> go ahead and open it to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. That, that music sounded like Monday Night Football, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. First Corinthians chapter ten. Answer. What was it? When the saints go marching in. When the saints, that's what it was. Yeah, <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter ten. And before we read those scriptures, I'm going to put up some uh, pictures here in just a moment. But our message tonight is uh, tempted, tested, and tried. How many of you know if we've lived long enough, we've all been tempted? Tested and tried. Amen. Amen. Uh, and you know, our tempting and our testing and our trying may be in different ways at different times in our life, but <clears throat> through our life, a lot of times we go through some challenging times, but isn't it cool how it makes us a better person down the road? Amen. <clears throat> Today I had people coming in the office a little bit, you know, and they were talking about a hard time in their life. And, I don't know what it is, but God has, has done a work in me, man. I'm kind of tender hearted. They were talking before church. They said, Boy, we sure like old Pastor Chip, but he makes us cry every now and then. I said, That's okay. The reason you're crying is probably because I set the pace. So I'm not, I'm not ashamed of that. Mike Smith, we was back there earlier talking, our little meeting before uh, Leadership Sunday, and he said, You're going to have to show me how to rip a license plate. He said, I like to kill myself today at work. <laughs> he said it was a Texas exempt. So there's, for some reason, he said, I think the last plate I got a hold of just for some, it was thicker than the one you did. <laughs> but I told him, I said, you got to remember, I ain't worked out in a couple years myself, so I had to bear down and put gloves on. It's, the day's coming. I'm 50 now. You know, last week I said, you know, when I was 40 years old, I had a challenge in my life. Uh, and I, I don't remember what I said, I, but I can promise you I'm not near as strong at 50. As I, how many can agree to that? At 50 or 60, you know, but I did limp through the license plate, but I did get tickled. We got done, and he said, you go ahead and show me how to rip a license plate. I like to pull every muscle in my body at work today. <laughs> I said, the next time you do that, you got to video it. 
You better see it on the big screen in church. But, you know, I want to show you some scriptures of, uh, some scriptures, some pictures of, uh, what day was this? We did not go to Texas. Monday. Monday? On Monday, we went and trimmed 15 gypsy men and horses. They're like a small draft horse. They they look huge in some of the pictures, but they're about 14 hands tall. But isn't that a pretty horse? That's, that's one of the girls show horses. There's another one. His name is Toda. Man, they're, uh, they're quality horses. These people go to Florida, everywhere. They, they live in Tempson, Texas, but you can see Toda there with the mane and the feather and the tail. They're good, but we, there's me doing what I do best, looking like a question mark, all right? <laughs> you wonder what a question mark looks like? <laughs> this, this family has some kids, and they catch all these horses. I think about these horses, and you see there's some brood mares there. And uh, admit, we may go back to the picture in the show ring this year when you came with a black and white horse. And isn't that a, that a beautiful picture? And that's some fine-looking horses. But you think about those horses, and... And everybody in here realizes you don't just go catch a horse out of a pasture and it look like that, right? You don't just go catch it out of the creek bottom and it be ready to go in the show ring, right? They keep these horses in the stalls and they prepare and they groom them. And these girls are very into showing. One of them's 18, one's about 15, I believe. And they have to groom these horses, take care of them, get get their, their feathers just right uh, on their feet, on the manes, tails, everything's got to be done just right so for show quality. Now, it's, it's a lot of fun to look at that pretty picture, isn't it? Or we can even put the, the other horse on there, the, uh, the, the brown horse, for sure. Yeah, look at that. It, that's, that's good to look at, but how many of you know that didn't just happen, right? A lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of feed. If you got a horse, say amen out there. Amen. <laughs> All right. If you've ever owned a horse or a cow, they love to eat, right? Amen. There's a lot of effort went into that. We see the finished product and it's kind of cool, but we also all know there's a lot of work went into that horse to look like that. A lot of training and uh, a lot of money. <laughs> amen. A lot of effort and a lot of time. And those pictures, I kind of like showing you some of the things, the different horses we get to do. I, that's the only account that I do those. They have 40 horses at one stop. Oh, wow. And uh, the good news is they shoe none of them, praise the Lord. I get to trim them. It's a lot easier to trim them. But those are big, stout horses. They're kind of short and muscle-bound, so they're kind of wide in the chest. So you have to get out there and get low, but... Uh, they're, they're very docile, gentle horses, but as I said, those pictures are, are good, but we all know there's a lot went into it to get that horse gentle enough to go into a show ring and look so pretty, amen? amen. Kind of like our lives. And uh, we talk about being tested and tried. I'm always, God sends me the neatest customers. And uh, there's a man, I'm going to preach one Sunday, he builds walking sticks and stuff. But then he also builds bowls out of wood. And he builds, I'm going to let people pass this thing around the churches. Don't steal it and take off running because I will run you down from behind. All right? I'm just joking. I'm just trying to scare you. But Mr. Jack, a customer of mine, he's retired. And he takes wood and he takes a chainsaw and makes bowls. And some of them are huge. I should have sent some pictures to Miss Cheryl. But, I mean, some big bowls are this big around. He cuts into them with a chainsaw. And then a hand sander. And the neat thing is, you smell that. It uh, smells like rich lighter pine. You know what rich lighter pine is in East Texas. And Mr. Jack finds this wood. So I asked Mr. Jack one day, where do you find this wood at to build all? And he's got shelves. It's overwhelming of all cypress wood, uh, cedar, white oak, any kind of wood you can imagine. He's He's taking a piece of wood, and I say, how do you know where to make the bowl? He said, the wood will tell me where to put it. So, where do you find this wood at, Mr. Jack? And you know what he said? I find it down in the, he owns some land on the Angelina River. And he said, I find it down in the river bottom, and it's just old driftwood that's washed up between two trees and gotten hung. So it's just old throwaway wood to a lot of people. But not to Mr. Jack. Let's say it together. Not to Mr. Jack. Aren't you glad that God goes through the old river bottom and looks for driftwood like you and I? Amen. See, this was just an old piece of a wood that he found in a river bottom lodged up between a couple of trees. 
And yet he made a bowl out of it. So I'm going to pass this around. It's nothing fancy, but you can smell it. You smell the bottom of it. It has those rich line pines that sit to it. But whoever's on this side can grab it. Y'all can pass it around in a little bit. But aren't you glad that God is never done with us? Amen. Amen. When, when the world might have seen an old piece of driftwood, I'm glad that God's kind of like Mr. Jack that lives in Lucky. One day I'm going to bring a walking cane that Mr. Jack made and I'm going to preach on it, all right? And uh, talk about how that wood. And I interviewed Mr. Jack, don't know this, but one day we were at his house and we'd shoot a horse for him. And he's kind of shy, so I had my phone and I hope he forgives me, but I recorded it. And I said, Mr. Jack, how do you make this, you know, walking stick look like it does? And so he. About a minute, he explains the process. It takes about six months for him to get a walking cane to look like it did, you know, when I took it home. And I said, thank you, and it looked nice. But you always know to, to get a finished product, it takes a little work, right? Whether it be with a horse or anything else. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 9 through verse 12. Allison, keep an eye on my bow. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 9 through 12. We talked about tempted, tested, and tried. Nor should we put Christ to the test, as some of them do, and then die from snake bites. Here we are in verse 10. And don't grumble, as some of them did. Let's say it together. And don't grumble, as some of them did. He's talking about Old Testament times. The children of Israel grumbled and griped in the wilderness. We talked a little bit about that Sunday. He said, don't grumble as some of them did. How many of you ever been tempted to grumble? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> we got some honest people out there tonight. <laughs> don't grumble as some of them did, and then were destroyed by the angel of death. These things happened to them as examples for who? Us. us. They were written down to warn us who live at the end of the age. If you think you are standing strong, be careful not to what? Fall. Fall. Let's think about verse 12. If we think we are standing strong, the Bible says to be careful not to fall. It's not wise for us to think we are something in our own selves. You ever heard of anybody say they jerked the rug out from under me? Life can happen. And we probably all experience something like that. He says... <clears throat> If you think you're standing strong, be careful not to fall. Verse 13 says the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. How many of you know sometimes it's hard to believe that scripture? We think, man, this is the hardest thing. I, nobody's ever went through what I went through. We all sometimes think that, right? It's a hard time. And it may be a hard time, but he says the temptations in your life Oh, no, no different from what others experience. Listen to this. And God is what? Faithful. Faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, He will show you a way out so that you can endure. Can I get a good amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Lord, <laughs> speak to our hearts tonight through Your Word. Lord, help us to realize that when we're tempted and tested and tried, Lord, it's not the end. We read the back of the book and it says we win. So I thank you to speak to our hearts and may we leave here differently than we came in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. I don't want to ever forget to welcome our Facebook viewers. You would be surprised how many people that I know lived up in uh, Lufkin and Abidoches area that watch our uh, church program. And I'm thankful. So it's an opportunity. But we're talking about tempted, tested, and tried. And I'm going to go back to verse 13 and break it down. It says, The temptations in your life are no different from, than what others experience. And God is faithful. Let's say it together. God is faithful. faithful. Listen to this. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. How many of you have thought often times that God got you mixed up with somebody else? You were like, Lord, you said you won't put more on me than I can stand, but Lord, you got me mixed up with somebody or something, and we think we can't stand it, but you know, when we trust Him, we can do things that maybe we don't realize we can do. You know, there used to be a record to run the mile. I don't know all these numbers, but how many of you have heard this before? There was years that 
nobody could break a certain time to run a, a mile. And then what happens? Somebody breaks it. Before long, somebody else breaks that record. Now, you wouldn't want me to run the mile because there would be no records broke. Amen. <laughs> but that's just the way it is. We set standards. And, it, you know, when, once somebody breaks that one that mile, you're like, man, somebody else comes along. So in our life, we're, we're all running this race. Remember several months ago on Wednesday nights, we talked about running our race and not only running it, <clears throat> but finishing our race. So he says, there's no temptation that can be more than you can stand. We may feel like we can't stand it, but God will always make a way because earlier in the verse, it says he is faithful. Amen? Amen. When God's faithful, then he'll allow, he won't allow it to be more than we can stand. And we'll keep reading verse 13. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out. Aren't you glad that God will show you a way out? When you're tempted. How many of you thankful that God always seems to show us a way out? Amen. We can name probably hundreds of times in our lives that we've been on, been on this earth very long. We've been challenged. We, we're going through a hard time. We think, Lord, I can't stand anymore. I can't make it. But this verse says, number one, He won't allow more than you can stand. And then He says, when you are tempted, He will show you a way out. How many of you have ever gotten, you know about something scary, any of you ever went hunting and got lost in the woods? And man, the, the scarier you get, the faster you go. And you, before long, you keep going by the same old tree. And you're like, this place looks familiar. And a lot of times, if you could see people from a bird's eye view, when we get afraid and lost, we end up walking in circles. Anybody ever done that? Like, I think I remember this place. A lot of times, we're walking in a circle. But aren't you going to have that God will not allow us to walk in a circle if we seek Him. Because it says He will show us a way out. How many of you have ever been lost before? I know since I got the squirrel dog, I've had to buy this high dollar tracking system for this dog. And it's got a GPS on it. Because the dog may take off and be 300 yards away. And when he trees or goes after a squirrel, he, he loses his hearing. He's gone. So i got to keep a tracker on that dog. Make sure once he gets out of hearing that I can find him. And I may have to get on a horse or get in my truck and try to find the dog. It's a tracking system. So I can see where he's going. But I'm thankful that God has a tracking system on us, so to speak. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. He knows where we're at all the time. And when we get in these tough times or we're tempted... Our trials come in our life. It says He will show you a way out. I don't know about you, but that comforts me to know that God is going to show me a way out of a difficult situation that I may be in. And then He goes on to say, so that you can what? Endure. We can always make it with the Lord on our side. I'm thankful that He says that He will show us a way out. Amen? Now, if you have your Bible, we'll flip over, hang a left, and go to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, we'll read verse 1 through verse 11. And we'll see here where Jesus was tempted by Satan himself. And we all know that we have an enemy. The Bible says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If you're living for God and, and we're trying to do what's right, sometimes, hey, even if we ain't, I mean, there's always a, an enemy out there. And I know even before I was a Christian, I mean... Just like God's got a plan for our life, the enemy has a plan to try to ruin our life, try to keep us away from doing what God intended for us to do. I tell you, that stuck Sunday, that saying that says, someone somewhere is depending on you to do what God called you to do. Remember that? Yeah. Probably going to see that again. <laughs> Amen. That's a good... I mean, that, that, that struck a chord in me. That, you know, how many of you have ever felt like giving up? Or just getting a little discouraged? We all do. And you think, man, I was I was thinking Sunday at the church. I had brought a little horse, a little young horse, and I was kind of selling that horse up there at the church, and I was thinking, how long would my list be if I got to thinking of everybody that I depended on to do what God called them to do? It would be too long to list. I couldn't write all the names. Amen. So it's important that every one of us as a follower of Christ 
We don't have to be a hero. We just have to do what God's called us to do. And be who God's called us to be, to be a witness, to be a light. And I think about Pastor Ron Connection and Pastor the Rising Sun Cowboy Church in Trinity, Texas. My mind went back to him. And I remember I'm so thankful that he was obedient to do what God called him to do. To be the pastor of that church. Because it probably wasn't always easy to be a pastor of a church. Especially back in that day, people didn't know what cowboy churches were. They were very rare. Yet, he was obedient to do what God had put on his heart to pastor that church. And as a result, I come along, sit out in the parking lot, roll the window down, and hear the gospel. For the first time, I really understood the gospel. I'm thankful that Pastor Ron did what his calling was. Whatever God had on his life at that time was the pastor of that church. How many of you could name a list longer than your leg that you're thankful that people did what God called them to do? So it's important that we as followers of Christ do our job to do what God's called us to do. But I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just being honest with you. When you start obeying God and doing what He called you to do, I can guarantee you there'll be some opposition in your life. Can I get one good amen tonight? Amen. When you when you get serious about serving the Lord, you ever notice there's always going to be opposition. But you know what? We've already read here that no matter what temptation we face, He's not going to allow more than we can stand, number one. And after that, He's going to make a way of escape or He's going to show us a way out of a temptation or a trial or a test in our life. And who else could we use as an example any better than Jesus himself? So we're in Matthew chapter 4. We're going to say, <clears throat> look at how did Jesus face temptation? Now, the last part of chapter 3 is where John the Baptist baptized Jesus. And John the Baptist basically said, <laughs> why are you coming to me? I'm not worthy to baptize you. And Jesus said, it should be done for we must carry out all God requires. So, John the Baptist agreed to baptize Jesus. Now, we go into chapter 4 of Matthew chapter 4. When Jesus, then, Jesus was led by what? The Spirit into what? Greatness. There was a time, sometimes even God will let us go through some wilderness experiences. Amen? And you know Moses, remember when Moses got ahead of God and killed the Egyptian? How many of us ever got ahead of God before? Oh God, I got this thing. Thank you for giving me some direction. I'll see you at the finish line. And our intentions are good. Our intentions are to please God and to live for God. But sometimes we, we get the card ahead of the horse. Alright. We've all done it. Moses has done that. I've preached on it multiple times. He knows that he's supposed to deliver the children of Israel. He's got a vision in his heart. He, he gets a little gung-ho and kills an Egyptian. And then they said, oh man, now you're going to kill everybody. So Moses retreats into the desert for 40 years. That doesn't seem glamorous, does it? But the whole time Moses is in the desert wandering around for 40 years, God's got him in training. He has no idea. Let's say that together. He has you know a lot of us in this room, we have, if we could see God's plan, we'd probably faint. God's bigger than us. He's smarter than us. And He is directing our lives, kind of like that tracker on old Camo when he's chasing a squirrel. Camo has no idea. I know exactly where he's at. And that little screen, it'll say, Camo, 286 yards. And it shows him even running. <laughs> and then it'll say, when he trees, now I can hear him, but it'll say, Camo, tree. And I think about how God, he, He's got a tracking collar on us, amen? He knows where we're at. We may think we're doing our own thing. Camo don't have a clue. He's got a little collar around his neck that's worth more than he is. I'm like, Lord, I don't want to lose the dog, but I don't want to lose the collar either. <laughs> it was I. But I, you know, I got a dog, I don't want to just lose him. And God's got a a tracking collar on us, so to speak. He knows where we're at. We're not hiding. Anybody ever tried to hide from God? You know how silly that is? We've probably all done it. But you know, God, He's always with us. He, he's got a tracking collar on us. He knows where we are. And He can lead us through the woods or through the 
desert. And when I see camo, I bought this card on my tracking collar that tells you where there's private land. And I'll hunt in the national forest. So he's, when he's getting close to private land, I, I'm going to kind of holler like I holler at my dog. So don't be offended, but I'll say, come on, come on, here, here, come on. I can see if he's being hard headed. It still says camo, three hundred and twelve yards. <laughs> camo here, here. Camo, three hundred and twenty six yards. <laughs> and then I say, camo. He probably can't hear me that far anyway. So then, there's a little button on this high dollar machine. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> When he's running away from you at 400 yards, you're like, come on, Kimbo. So I've got this button on the right, and it's, it says tone. So when I hit it, it goes. <laughs> so Kimbo gets plenty of warning. And then I say, Kimbo, here. And he's making a circle. It says 422 yards, and he's doing this. He's still pulling. He's running faster now than he was. I'm like, Kimbo. And he's like, forget you, Dad. I smell a squirrel. <laughs> So I'm like, and then I say, come on here. And that's his last chance. So I move over to the left button and I set the setting on the little shocker. And all of a sudden, you don't hear anything. I'm like, come on here. And if I see him go three yards further, I'm like, Doop, with my left hand. And nothing said. But you start watching your camera. He starts making a circle. Bumpy one more time, and then all of a sudden it says, Camo approaching. <laughs> and he's running, but he's coming back to me. And he don't realize I'm doing that for his good. I mean, he thinks, man, I just want to chase squirrels. But if he gets on private property and somebody shoots my dog, that's a sad day. Right. And I'm trying to keep him in line. And God's the same way with us. He's got a tracker on us. And we're off running around with our tongue hanging out. Probably like an old dog. Loping around and thinking we're really doing all this. But yet, God's orchestrating our steps. Even when we go the wrong way. Aren't you glad? Yeah. Anybody ever went the wrong way? Yeah. If you hadn't, you're going to finish this sermon tonight. Come on up. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you have, just like all of us. But Camo, he, don't, he thinks, man. But once you buzz him a little bit, I mean, he's like, he's coming home. And then when he gets to me, his tongue's hanging out. And he's like, how you doing, Dad? He'll run up to me, you know, and I'll pet him up. Thank you for coming back, Camo. All right. All I saw was the money go. <laughs> I'm glad you come home. I'm glad I got you and my collar. Praise God. <laughs> I'll pet him up and put him on a chain and, and you know, a little lead. Because if you let him go, he's going, he's going to find another squirrel. That's his job. So you have to put him on a leash and head back to the truck. So sometimes God has to do that to us. I like preaching off personal life experience. Because <laughs> I see myself in camo sometimes. None of you would like to admit that, but I'm willing to tell you. We're all like camel and squirrel dogs sometimes. We make a big old loop out there, and God's saying, I get off that private property over there. That's dangerous to you. We don't want you to get in trouble. And so he, sometimes He will turn up the heat on us a little bit. That's okay, too. He loves us. He cares about us. I love my dog. I don't want him to get shot or hurt or go plumb out of a mile and a half range of the tracking collar. Amen? I'm trying to keep him within range, and I'm just glad God keeps us within range. Amen? Amen. Y'all do forgive me. Y'all realize I just chased a rabbit all over the country, right? <laughs> but some of our best sermons is when we chase a rabbit. And you think about that that dog, God's the same way. He's got his eye on us. He cares about us. Amen? Amen. The, the, the way I love that dog and appreciate that dog, that's not, you can't even compare that to how much God loves you. Amen. Amen? So he's got his eye on us. He cares about us. But we will, when we serve the Lord, we will face temptations and challenges. The more you serve Him and try to commit to Him, there'll be some opposition. Does that mean that we have to be afraid? Absolutely not. We just have to know who's got our back. Amen? Amen? Amen. I remember when I was a little boy, <coughs> people tried to bully me one time in a Beulah. I mean, it's bad when you get bullied in Beulah, amen? <laughs> but I was younger than them. And I remember one day my dad, 
he uh, took me to the store at Mulet's, no longer there, a little old wooden store. Y'all remember them old stores that used to cut that bacon with a big thick rind? Yeah. And cut that bacon right in front of me. I remember the little boy. And I went up to the store, the people that was kind of pulling me around, my dad was with me. But I had a different attitude with dad with me, right? I'm like, y'all got a problem now? <laughs> little bitty fella. And it's the same way we have an enemy, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but when you know who has your back, it's a little different attitude. You look at things a little different because Jesus has our back. He's looking out for us. Can I get a good amen? amen? I mean, I can't tell you how many times I probably shouldn't even be here. I remember bucking off bulls before, laying on my back. I told you this, both back feet go right beside each ear. <laughs> You can't tell me that God didn't have his hand on us. I don't, it's amazing with bull riding how few people get hurt as they do. I mean, you just see, they go from out of sight and there's dust everywhere. They, the guy gets up and runs off. And you're like, thank you, Lord. Especially when you got a grandson. It'll keep you riding bulls. It keeps your prayer life good, don't it, Mr. Martin? Amen. <laughs> you're like, Lord, watch over. Protect them. And, and yet, I see God's had his hands on me and I got a bunch of pictures in the home. I'm trying to get some pictures and put them in the office. And Allison will be like, here's another bull picture. I said, that's on number 20. <laughs> I got on him in Trinity, Texas. He went into my hand, turned back to the right. I won the bull riding on him, but man, he hurt my tailbone. <laughs> One time I got, I got, I tried to get off. He was coming into my hand, so I slid back. So he kind of threw me up in the air. I felt like I went... Really high, I could see the water tire in Trinity, Texas. I, not really. And I come down on my butt just as flat on my tailbone. Man, it hurt. I still feel that sometimes when I get up. I remember old Twenty the Bull. He's long gone. But, you know, God's got a plan for us. And He has watched out and protected me through the years. Now, when God's ready for us to go home, I mean, He's going he's gonna to take us. But until then, he's not ready for you to go home. And if you're here today, you're watching on Facebook, God's not done with you. Amen? Amen. He's got a purpose for you. And the more we get close to him, the, the less range he allows us on the old shopping collar. Amen? Yet he's got plans for us. So here we go. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the... Wilderness, kind of like old Camo, taken to the National Forest. He was led into the wilderness to be blessed. Is that what it says? <laughs> to be what? Tempted, Tempted by who? The devil. the devil. See, Jesus had a call and a plan on his life, right? He stepped over the banner of heaven and came to earth to die for a man like me. That's all that's all of it. He stepped over the banner of heaven and accepted. Said, I'll go, Dad, and I'll take their place. He took your sin on the cross. He took my sin on the cross. That's, that's a humbling thing. He didn't have to do it, but he willingly done it. And he was led out. In order for him to reach his destiny and purpose in life, even Jesus had to be tested. That's not real exciting, but it's true. That means... We're going to face some tests. So he was out in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. He fasted and became very what? Hungry. Hungry. How many of you know I can get your attention when I talk about food, right? I don't want to fast 40 days and 40 nights. Amen. During that time, the devil came and said to him, and him being Jesus, so Satan comes to Jesus and says, give. Let's say that word together. Give. Yeah. Give. You be the Son of God. Tell these stones to become loaves of bread. And Jesus told him, No, the Scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now, we're not going to finish this tonight. We'll pick it up next week probably. But I want to bring something home as we close. One of the things that Satan does in our life, the enemy, he is the father. The Bible says he is the father of all lies. Main tool that Satan tries to use against us is to question, get us to question who we are and who God is in our life. If we're honest, we've all he he challenges us many times. Our mind is our biggest battleground, and yet we know who we are in Christ. But sometimes 
Satan tempted Jesus and the first words out of his mouth were what? If you are the Son of God. He tries to challenge that. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, he even took a scripture out of context and quoted it and said, He will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. And Jesus responded and said, The scriptures also say you must not test the Lord your God. In verse 8, next, the devil took him on the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdom of the world and their glory. He says, I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Verse 10, Jesus said, get out of here, Satan, or get behind me, Satan. And Jesus said unto him, for the scriptures say, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil did what? Went away, and angels come and took care of Jesus. So our job is to resist the devil. The Bible says resist him and he will flee. But it's our job to do the resisting. Now here's a couple of things that we're done. We'll probably pick up on this next week. The number one tool that Satan does come against us, just like he did Jesus, he causes us to question who we are in Christ. Because in ourselves, we got enough sense to know we're nothing. But in Christ, we're everything. We've been made the righteousness of God. First temptation he came against Jesus was with hunger. How many of you know that gets all of our attention? Amen. Amen. You know you like to eat when you wake up in the night and call your wife Butterfinger, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Butterfinger is getting famous in this church. Several people come up to me tonight. One of them said, I told my husband, call me Butterfinger, honey. We may start a marriage revolution in this church all behind a Butterfinger candy bar. Amen? We may be doing marriage seminars. <laughs> but I do like those little blizzards. At least we got the many. Don't forget. Praise God. I didn't get the big blizzard. But he tempted Jesus with hunger. And then the second thing was he tempted him with ego. You say you're the son of God. You know what ego stands for? Edge God out. We got to be careful about our egos. Amen? Without Him, we can do nothing. But through Him, we can do everything. We can do all things through Christ. And He also tempted Him with materialism. You know, how many of you know things are great? God is well able to meet our needs. How many of you would testify that God's been good to you and met your needs? Amen. Man, I'm thankful. <clears throat> but you know what? Just materialism doesn't make us happy. Things are things. I'm glad God will bless you. The Bible says you can't outgive God. If you'll help those in need, if you'll be a blessing and help your local church with tithes and offerings, I promise you, I challenge you. Try it. It's the only place in the Bible that said God says, try me and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven. Can I get that amen? amen. So God's well able to bless us and meet our needs. I remember when I was in Bible school, I had 37 cents in the bank. That'll get you on your on your knees. Amen. <laughs> 37 cents. But I never missed a meal because God always provided. Amen. But God will provide our needs. But the cool thing is there's nothing that takes a place of knowing Him. Amen. So I want to encourage you. We're not going to be tempted. When, when Satan tries to tempt us, we're not going to fall for it. Amen. Amen. I owe you one minute and 48 50 seconds, all right? We'll get back next week. Lord, I ask you to help us as we go through this week. May we let our light shine for you. Lord, may you keep the traffic collar on us, keep an eye on us like you always do. And Lord, may we be quick to obey your lead. And Lord, when we're tempted, may we learn from your word, Lord, that we can resist the devil and he'll flee from us. And Lord, we thank you that you give us power. Lord, do everything we need to meet every need that we have. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Guys, appreciate y'all. You're the best church in the whole world. I'm here on Wednesday with me and Miss Allison. So if y'all.